Okay, so hopefully a quicker lesson today. Uh, we're going to cover reciprocal trig ratios and special triangles. Uh, here's today's plan. We started with a formative quiz in Google Classroom. If you haven't already done that, please do. It's called the April 1st formative quiz, I think I called it. Uh, we're going to connect the concept of exact values of reciprocal trig ratios from last class to special triangles today. Also, we're going to be finding the approximate values of trig ratios. That's going to go really quick. Uh, again, just my daily reminder, please check your emails every single day and respond to any of the emails that I send. Uh, that is absolutely crucial. All right, so what we're gonna start with today, this is not in the notebooklet, uh, but rather I want just to make sure we've understand or we've understood everything that we've learned in the last day or two. Uh, six trigonometric ratios, as we've discovered, it's not just sine, cos, and tan. We also have cosecant, secant, and cotangent. Uh, list all six trig ratios in reference to the relative sides of a triangle as well as their coordinate features, x, y, and r, r being, of course, the radius, or in other words, the diagonal hypotenuse length. Uh, all right, let's start with sine. Sine of theta is opposite over hypotenuse, um, so that would be part of your relative sides of a triangle, so opposite over hypotenuse. And of course, on uh, a triangle in terms of a coordinate feature, your opposite side is your y, and your hypotenuse is your r. Okay, so now cosine, cosine theta, is of course adjacent over hypotenuse. And if you think on a uh, coordinate feature, your adjacent side is your x. So in other words, we have x over r. Uh, for tan theta, tan is opposite over adjacent. And of course, again, opposite is y, and adjacent is x. Now, from these, we have all three of our reciprocal trig ratios as well. So the reciprocal trig ratio for sine is cosecant. So cosecant theta is uh, just the reciprocal of each of these, right? So in other words, cosecant theta would be your hypotenuse over your opposite, which another way of saying this is your radius r over y. For secant of theta, there we go, secant theta, uh, that's going to be hypotenuse over adjacent or in other words, your r over your x. As for tangent, the, uh, the reciprocal ratio for that is cotangent, so cotangent theta, therefore equals adjacent over opposite, and your adjacent side is x, and your opposite is y. So this might be a little useful to, to write down somewhere just kind of as a reference tool for you. Uh, hopefully you understood all of these ones, uh, no problem from before, especially the whole opposite over hypotenuse, adjacent over hypotenuse, and opposite over adjacent. That comes from that uh, old so katoa as being a way of remembering those. Um, but these, of course, are also important to remember as well. But remember, it's just the reciprocal of your old ones. So this is in the notebook, but it's on page 29. Uh, it's just a whole bunch of different questions where we're looking uh, for an exact value of each of these trig ratios. And oftentimes, these are going to rely on uh, special triangles. So this very first ratio that it gave us is secant 300 degrees. Uh, it's important to kind of start with a reference angle so you know uh, what you're actually be using to find that and then of course you can just use your cast rule to determine whether it's positive or negative from there. Uh, well a reference angle of 300 degrees is going to be 60 degrees. Um, now with secant 300, secant of course is the reciprocal of cosine so we know it's hypotenuse over adjacent, or in other words, your r over your x. Now, with all of these questions, because it doesn't tell us what uh, kind of circle or, or whatever that it's on, uh, just because everything scales just fine within a ratio, you can assume that r for all of these is going to be 1. So in other words, we can make the assumption that all of these are on the unit circle. Uh, so for a diagram here, if we drew a very quick diagram of this. What you might want to do is draw 300 degrees first, which is a 60 degree reference angle in quadrant four. So it's going to look something like this. We're going to have this point right here uh, and a right angle up here, 60 degrees here. Uh, anyway, so since there's a 60 degree angle here, we know that this is a special triangle. Uh, and with special triangles, of course, especially when you deal with them on a unit circle, we know the hypotenuse is one. Uh, the side across from the 30 degree angle is one half, and the side across from the 60 degree angle is root three over two. Well, we know uh, for secant 300, we're looking for r over x. Well, x is one half and r is one. So it's really like we're saying one over one half. So one over one half, but one over one half is one divided by one half. That's just gonna give us two. 
Now, another important thing to remember here uh, is the whole idea of the cast rule. Cast rule says that cosine is positive there, all are positive here, sine is positive here, and tan is positive here. Well, secant is the reciprocal of cosine. So anywhere that cosine is positive, secant will also be positive. So we know, therefore, that this answer is positive too. Another way you could check is if you were careful when you put together this, which I wasn't, but if you were careful when you were putting this together, you could actually be mindful of whether your x's and your y's are positive or negative. Well, x is positive here, positive one over two, uh, but y would be negative root three over two. And that's what I was meaning why, why I was saying I, I wasn't very careful when I put this together. But the good news is we didn't use this y value. So it really didn't matter in the end that I wasn't super careful. Uh, anyway, let's do another example, cotangent negative 225 degrees. Negative 225 degrees is, is ridiculous, right? A negative angle is just annoying. Another thing you could do here is find a coterminal angle to that 225 degrees. So in other words, just take negative 225 and add 360 to it, because that's gonna bump it into a positive angle. This is like the same thing as saying cotangent of 135 degrees, right? That becomes a lot more clear. That's way easier to visualize. I can tell right off the bat that that's in quadrant two, and I can also tell that a reference angle exists of 45 degrees. Now cotangent, I'm just gonna write it again over here. Cotangent is the reciprocal of tan. Tan is opposite over adjacent, so therefore cotangent is adjacent over opposite, or in other words, x over y. If we draw a picture of where this is now, we know it's 135 degrees, really. It's the same thing as negative 225 degrees, uh, which is right here. If we draw that as a triangle, we know our hypotenuse is gonna be one, our x is gonna be root two over two, because remember this is 45 degrees, so root two over two, but again, it's negative, so we'll make it negative root two over two. And this side for y is gonna be positive root two over two. And again, in case you're wondering where I got those from, it's just from special triangles. I have those special triangles memorized, uh, and I highly advise that you do as well. Uh, so this time I was a little more careful with setting this up. I actually made sure my x is negative, y is gonna be positive here, so that's fine. Uh, remember, cotangent is adjacent over opposite. Well, the adjacent side is negative root two over two, and the opposite side is positive root two over two. If you wanted to write that out, negative root two over two over positive root two over two, it's just the same thing on the top and the bottom, except one of them is negative. So those, those are just gonna totally cancel out here, and you're gonna find that this is equal to negative one. And again, it makes sense that this should be negative one from our cast rule. And the only thing that should be positive up here is uh, sine, right? Cotangent is related to tan, Tan is positive here and here, so tan would be negative here. Since tan is negative here, then that means cotangent will also be negative there. Anyway, moving on. Uh, oh, too far. There we go. Uh, cosecant 5 pi over 6. First of all, cosecant is uh, the reciprocal of sine. Sine is opposite over hypotenuse, so we know that this is hypotenuse over opposite, or in other words, r over y. Uh, for this right here, the 5 pi over 6, we're looking for a reference angle, theta r. Uh, to me, that's pretty clear that a reference angle there is pi over 6. But in case you are uh, having trouble remembering it, maybe I'll just draw it down here. Uh, pi is right here. 5 pi over 6 is just almost pi. It's just barely pi. If it was 6 pi over 6, you'd be right at pi. So you're only a smidge away from being at pi, and that little extra smidge is that pi over 6, because 5 pi over 6 is here. That's a 5. 5 pi over 6 is right there. Uh, this would be 6 pi over 6, so that remaining difference, uh, 1 pi over 6. And if you're still uncomfortable with uh, radians here, uh, remember that pi over 6 is the equivalent of saying 30 degrees. But I'd like to stick with using radians here. I don't want us to like confuse and muddle them with degrees. I know it's just two different measurement systems, but I think it's important for us to stop relying so much on degrees because we're gonna see a lot of radians going forward. Anyway, so we know we are in quadrant two here. So if we're gonna draw a diagram of this one, uh, we know pi over six is what we're dealing with right here. Now pi over six, 30 degrees, if you're more comfortable with that, this side length across from that is going to be one half. The hypotenuse is always one. And this side is going to be that root three over two. But notice x is negative here, so I'll make it negative root three over two. Uh, bottom line is now we want to get our ratio going. Hypotenuse over opposite. The hypotenuse is one. The opposite is one half. One divided by one half is what we're dealing with there. And one divided by one half is just two. And it's positive two because, again, by the cast rule, Sine should be positive in this quadrant. Cosecant is related to sine. So if sine is positive, cosecant is also positive. 
Uh, secant 4 pi over 3, again, to me, the reference angle is clear, but in case it isn't, remember 4 pi over 3, this is 1 pi, so 3 pi over 3, 4 pi over 3 has got to be down here somewhere, right? So that extra difference is pi over 3, right? Uh, secant is related to cosine. Cosine is uh, adjacent over hypotenuse, so this is going to be hypotenuse over adjacent. Notice my like mental you know, math thing that's going on there. I'm actually thinking about what they're related to. That's a good strategy for you guys going back to as well. Uh, hypotenuse, of course, is R. Adjacent is going to be X. Uh, pi over 3, if you're really preferring degrees here, that's 60 degrees. Let's draw a picture, though, one way or another. We're going to be in quadrant 3 this time. That's going to put us down here. We have our angle of pi over 3, our reference angle of pi over 3, I should say. Uh, across from pi over 3 is going to be the negative root 3 over 2. Notice I made it negative because we're down here. Uh, and then your x is going to be negative 1 half. And again, I made that negative because x is negative over here. And your hypotenuse, of course, is going to be 1. Uh, your hypotenuse is 1. Adjacent is negative 1 half. So really, we have 1 over negative 1 half. Well, 1 divided by negative 1 half is going to give you negative 2. Next questions here, cotan uh, 3 pi over 2. Oh, that's a good one. 3 pi over 2, that should be a familiar number to us. 3 pi over 2 is 270 degrees, which actually means that our reference angle is a full 90 degrees, or in other words, our reference angle is a full pi over 2, right? That's the same thing as saying 90 degrees, okay? That's a very bizarre reference angle, really, really strange. Um, but cotangent, of course, being the reciprocal of tan, means we're going to deal with adjacent over opposite or in other words, x over y. Uh, if we're going to draw a picture here, this is going to be a really weird one to draw a picture for. Your angle is right down here at this uh, 3 pi over 2, or in other words, 270 degrees. So I'm just going to like really highlight this part right here. OK, so here's where it gets really weird here. Um, what's important to know is that if you imagine this being on a unit circle, Ooh, don't know what happened in the end of the unit circle there, but you know, you get the idea. Uh, if you imagine this as being on the end of a unit circle, we're right on this point on the unit circle right here, right on the bottom of the y-axis. Uh, if you think of this in terms of x over y, notice x right here, the value of x right here on the unit circle would be 0, and your y would be negative 1. So that's 0 divided by negative 1, which is actually equal to 0. So cotangent of 3 pi over 2 is actually equal to zero. And if you ever want to test this, you can actually type in your calculator one over tan of three pi over two. Make sure the three pi over two is in brackets, just like this though, when you do it one over, maybe you can put tan in an extra set of brackets here too. You can test that out, that should give you zero. Remember though, when you put radians inside of a, a trig ratio, you gotta make sure your calculator is in radian mode. And I'm actually gonna talk about that in a second too. But either way, cotangent three pi over two is gonna equal zero. Now cosecant, of course, is our last one here. Remember cosecant is the reciprocal of sine. Sine is opposite over hypotenuse. So we got hypotenuse over opposite, or in other words, R over Y. Uh, pi is our angle here. That's a really weird one. Remember pi is over here. So in other words, since pi is over here, our reference angle is actually zero. Um, or if you want that in degrees, big surprise guys, zero radians in degrees is zero, zero degrees, right? So uh, we don't have a reference angle. Zero is a reference angle. If we're going to draw a picture of this, we are again at pi. It would be kind of like before where I just kind of have to shade the line here so you know what's going on. So we're right here. If this is on a unit circle. That is probably the worst unit circle I've ever drawn, but you get the idea. Uh, notice our coordinate at this point is negative one zero. Well, remember, hypotenuse is r over y. On a unit circle, r is always 1 by definition. So we're going to go 1 divided by what's our value of y right here? Well, y is 0. 1 divided by 0. Well, what's 1 divided by 0? There is no answer. It's undefined, right? Or in other words, an error. So for cosecant of pi, you do not have an answer. There is no answer for cosecant of pi. And if you want a more uh, elaborate definition of that, that comes into the idea that the uh, cosecant pi is equal to one over sine of pi, and sine of pi is equal to zero. So one over sine pi is one over zero, therefore undefined. Okay, so we're almost done here. Uh, this is something else that was in the booklet. I thought, you know what, I'll just leave it in because it's really quick. Uh, we've been dealing with exact values of trig ratios. 
those are really, really useful, right? So sometimes you have to leave them as like literally like root three over two. Uh, but sometimes it's nice just to have an approximate value, which is just like well, a rounded decimal answer uh, for the value of your ratio. Uh, basically, long story short, you can just throw these in the calculator and get it uh, good to go. But you got to keep in mind that the mode that your calculator should be in depends on whether the angle is given in degrees or in radians. On your graphing calculator, up where, uh, right next to the button that says second, uh, there's a button that says mode. And if you click on it, it's the third line down, it says radian or degree. So you need to go down and change that depending on what you're dealing with. Well, for this first one, 10, 11 pi over six, I think it's pretty crystal clear there that uh, we're dealing in radians. So uh, might as well jot that down, radians. Uh, so for 10, 11 pi over six, if you're looking just for an approximate value, rather than doing the whole exact value thing where you have to look at your special triangles and all that, you can just throw that in your calculator. That's it, right? So 10, 11 pi over six, and then close your brackets off. Uh, this gives me an approximate value, and I guess I didn't say on this page uh, what it should be rounded to. So you know what, we'll just do to like four decimal places, just for really good measure. Uh, this is equal to negative 0 0.5774. Now, cosine negative 30 degrees, you can also just throw that in your calculator. But remember, this time around, we're in degree mode. So you're going to want to switch back to degree mode in your calculator before you do anything here. And then literally just throw in cosine negative 30. And this should give you 0 0.8660 if you're just rounding it to four decimal places. It kind of pains me to do this because both of these questions we just did would have been special triangles. So it is kind of silly doing this. Um, but sometimes all you need is an approximate value. You don't need to have an exact value sometimes. Uh, so that's good to know. Next one, sine 8.4. Don't let this confuse you. Notice there's no degree sign. If I just say sine 8.4, that is actually technically in radians. Radians are better when they are expressed in terms of pi, but they don't have to be expressed in terms of pi, right? Um, yeah, so in other words, sine 8.4, that is in radians. So you're gonna switch back to radian mode here and then go sine 8.4, and you're going to get to four decimal places, 0 0.8546. Last but not least, secant 25. It's probably a question that's been on your mind for a couple days now. Uh, is there a secant button in your calculator? Well, the answer is no, there isn't. Uh, so you have no choice but to use the reciprocal ratio. Well, secant is the reciprocal of cosine, so we can instead throw in our calculator one over cosine 25. Right, and again, it's 25 degrees, so we need to make sure we're in degree mode. So going back to degree mode here, uh, one divided by cosine 25 gives me 1.1034, okay? Those would be our answers as approximate value, so you can just throw them right in your calculator. Anyway, to summarize, points on the intersection of the unit circle and the terminal arm of an angle in standard position can be given using the coordinates P theta equals cosine theta, sine theta. In other words, cosine on a unit circle represents your X and sine represents your Y. That's about it. Uh, each primary trig ratio has a reciprocal trig ratio. Those we kind of beat to death here. Exact values for trig ratios and special angles and their multiples can be found using points in the unit circle. That's again what we're doing today. Approximate values of any trig ratio can be found using a calculator. Yeah, we just did that. Uh, given a trig ratio, theta can be found using the inverse. Uh, that's, yeah, you've known that from before, you know, whatever. Anyway, you can just read this, it's whatever, we're done. So for practice, page 201, questions one to nine, 13 and uh, 19. Uh, same questions as yesterday, of course, please polish those off. And again, I know I'm sounding like a broken record here, but please check your emails daily and respond to any emails that I send. Again, if you have any questions, please let me know. Uh, talk to you guys later.